Hello, welcome to Avanad's Imagine What You Will Do With AI video series. Today, my guest is Brian Furlong from Dornan Engineering. Brian, you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, you might give us a background to you and also to Dornan Engineering and what they do. Thanks very much. Um, so I have about 20 years experience in, in IT and I've been working for Dornan Engineering, Engineering for the last four years. Dornan is a, a large multinational engineering company specializing in mechanical and electrical instrumentation engineering. We work um, mainly on data centers and life sciences. We are based in Ireland, but we have offices in the UK, sites in the UK, sites in Netherlands, uh, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, uh, and, and uh, in Denmark as well. So. We're, we're, we're quite widespread at the moment. A, a fairly global operation operating out of Ireland. Uh, uh, my understanding is is you deal with significant global companies we on, do. with their needs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that journey for yourself, the, the series is about, you know, what we can do with AI, what we, what we will ultimately end up doing with AI. From your side, the journey of the past 12 to 24 months, you're dealing with some significant global clients what how has your journey started yeah so i, I suppose uh, construction can or has traditionally been a little bit further behind when it comes to adopting it and adopting new systems and dornan um and uh, the it department in dornan have been you know driving new systems um new adoption of of systems for the last number of years when ChatGPT came on the scene, it was very much a, uh, what's, you know, watch the space, what's going yeah. to happen. Uh, like we've been using AI in a lot of systems, um, you know, through third parties or whatever for the last number of years happens in the background. We don't, we don't worry about it. Um, but ChatGPT came on, people have started using it. We made a decision quite early on not to block ChatGPT. Some companies were blocking it, you know, blocking access to it. So we, we have strong cybersecurity policies in, in Dornan. We have strong data protection policies. We wanted to allow people to use the tools that are out there, but, you know, educate them on what's safe and what's not, you know, and what you should, should and shouldn't put up there. So as an organization, you almost foster that innovation, but with yeah. the guidelines that need to be there to, to protect your organization. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you're like me with ChatGPT, you know, when we started to use them personally, the mm. business side of it starts to become an easier company because we understand it. Yeah. And often, so from your side, to go from something like ChatGPT, which is something, you know, I would use to, if I was going on a uh, vacation, yeah. uh, brilliant for organizing. And you get to see the value of it all of a sudden. But when you bring it into your work, it's how do you apply it to your work value? You're, where did you start on that journey? Was it with Copilot or was it like before that? I mean, as you said, it was already baked into a number of your products that you used yeah but i'm super interested in that side of it so um i suppose copilot was the first but we have a number of departments in dorn and, and and i suppose when you have a company that's that's full of engineers and full of very intelligent people they often come to it with you know systems that they've used in the past or systems they, they use personally and it is often in in Dornan you know, allowing them to use it or facilitating them to use it. Um, we would have departments that would have used it as part of their, their job. So the big problem, I suppose, with ChatGPT is that it's, we don't, we, we don't want to be putting our internal documents up there, giving yeah. it access to, to, to various systems. So we wanted something that could access our internal documents, that could access our emails, teams, that type of thing, um, and co-pilot for Microsoft 365 was one we chose. We, we use uh, Office 365 and we have done for years. So it was the logical choice. And did you instantaneously see the benefits or was it something that you kind of had to be on a journey with? We spent a lot of time working on making sure it was done right. And the, the guys, Chris and the guys on the team were making sure it was done properly and that, yeah. it, that it looked right. But we, we rolled it out and we could see the benefits straight away. We could see people were getting answers from the co-pilot, you know, the, the AI that they'd ordinarily go to IT with. Yeah. Um, and we were trying to bring in automation in general to reduce the number of tickets coming in because the company is growing. Uh, and that helped a lot. And it was also a humorous side. People were using it not just for IT requests, but for 
every every yeah. sort of request, but it just helped with language. People could request in their own language because we're across Europe, so there's all different languages. So people could request in their own language and, and, and get the answer in their own language as well. So that was our first foray into it, I suppose. We might talk a little bit about the co-pilot side of this, which is, as you said, pointed towards your Word document, your PowerPoints, your, your emails, etc. But taking that to another level where you can really maximize it on your line of business applications. Um, when you go through that journey, I mean, the start point, is it, is the start point for, for Dorna and for, you, for yourselves, is it the data? Is it the use case? Is it, is it security and governance? Where do you start on that journey when you start to want to actually get more from the... It was on, it was on the security and governance. Mm. Um, we, we could see what benefits it would have for a lot of people in the company. Um, we, were, we were getting asked for it by people in the company. Our biggest fear was not that we didn't have good um, rules and, and, and you know, proper, proper data structure. It was oversharing of data. And, and for example, I always give the example in work that if somebody had um, an Excel sheet that they were working on and they shared it with me two years ago, and then repurposed that sheet for something else and it contained classified documentation. It was still shared with me. I didn't know it was shared with me. I'd forgotten about it. They didn't know it was shared with anybody. They hadn't noticed it. And then all of a sudden I ask a question of Copilot and Copilot will give you an answer. Leaving ethics aside, it'll give you an answer based on what you have access to. Yeah. And that was our biggest fear. We have good uh, policies around, and procedures around file access and people can access certain files, other people can access certain files, whether that's in SharePoint, whether it's on premise. And that was our worry that it would give more information than, than, you, than you wanted to give. And that was, yeah, and th that seems to be a very recurring team from, from anybody we've spoken to. It's very much the technology and the use cases are, they're exciting. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, you start with one use case, you very quickly get to another, something that helps your bottom line, something that helps the operational efficiency, et cetera. Um, and then you go through the process of looking at wh where's the data stores, how are we going to move that data to a central place where we can leverage the AI from um, connected to an LLM or an S a, a small language model. But it very quickly, as you say, it comes back to the clear and obvious rules around security governance uh, what kind of data is in there um from from your side i mean that must be probably the number one start point is it safe to say that it was that's where you start yeah and investment we've made let's say financial investment hasn't necessarily been on the ai itself it's been on the likes of purview you know where we can um, label documents where we could label documents automatically yeah. based on their content, based on based off a template that we can use, and something like GDPR, that type of thing. And it's 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 that it's there where the the investment has been made. Yeah. So now we're at the stage now where we're buying the copilot licenses. We're rolling it out to nearly fifty people at the moment, mm. um, and that's going to grow. But we wanted to make that investment yeah. first, and we did a lot of. There, there's always going to be a point in time where you have to release it into the the wild, yeah. say, and you're going to have risks. You have to accept certain risks. Mm. The pilot we're doing is with people who know the risks and know what can happen. You know, if if, if something goes wrong, it's one. It's it's actually sorry, and and you, you've hit on a really interesting point. What's become evident is the level of change management mm. that's involved in something like rolling out copilot or a custom copilot. Yeah. It's the awareness, it's the responsible nature of using it. Yeah. It is, it's, it's, there's a trend and the trend is governance and security is a pretty fantastic solution to leverage um, for that. Um, you get into the basics of it all. And it's funny, it's, it's where you get something that's super exciting, yeah. but you're, you realize after a lot of experience that it comes back to the security governance, the level of responsibility, the people you involve in your initial pilots. Yeah. When you looked at them, well, it was it the, the people you chose for the pilot. Was it a little bit about making sure they fully understood the technology a little bit? It was, and and fully understood is is it's it's, it's hard to fully understand yeah. any any technology, especially when you're the end user. 
it's what what can it do for me on a day to day basis. The the people we chose were people from across the business, people who would have possibly used ChatGPT for their business, mm. people who would who would have been at the forefront of previous technologies like SharePoint and and things like that. We would have used people who are trustworthy, people who will report to us if there's an issue, you know, if they're seeing data they shouldn't be seeing. Like we have people from HR, we have people from finance, you know, as well. And, and senior people as well, you know, it's, it's not just, it's not, it's, it, it's a random selection of senior, mid-level, junior people. Yeah. Um, but, and I suppose this is a rule in cybersecurity, you can't, you can't make it perfect, you can't lock it down to such an extent that they can't use it. We've been slow to roll out data labeling on Purview. We, we tried it about four years ago and, and, and you know, when you label documents as strictly confidential, you can, you can add a, a layer of access that people have to go through, you know, two-factor authentication yeah. and, and so on to, to open a document when we have, we'd have, uh, you know, access like that into the network. But when you're inside and you want to open a document, you don't want to have to do any more work if you don't, if you don't have to. So we're very careful on how we roll out labeling and the security around Copilot. That we, people need to be able to work at the same time. And, and if people are saving time by using Copilot, you'd want to be adding time yeah. by putting unnecessary restrictions on them as well. And it's, it, it's, it's an interesting conversation when I think about it. I think of all the tools that, from a data modernization perspective, like we would use um, Microsoft Fabric, we would use Databricks from an ML perspective often. Um, a lot of them sitting on Microsoft's uh, technology areas. Uh, you've mentioned Purview, Prophecy from a master data management side of the house. Have those tools, I mean, well, let, let's let's go to, to, to Purview, for example. Has that helped the process, that tool? Or has it enabled you to be more confident in? It, it has, yeah. It, the fact that the tool is there and we can label documents based on the content is, and we can, it, it, it also gives us a much better idea of where the data is, what's, what's in the data. You know, every company historically has data that's in um, emails, yeah. you know, going back years, and it'll, Purview will do that. And it's, 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 very, it's very good that way. And it, gives you, it does give you a level of comfort that you have the data there, you know, that you know what, what is there. What have been your first steps into that area of consolidation of your data? Have you looked at particular platforms or? So historically we would have used a server on each construction site and there would have been files on the server. There would have been files on the file server back in the head office. We moved away from that to uh, using SharePoint, using Teams. We still have um, some data on file servers, obviously, but the aim was to have everything in a team site for each, or SharePoint site for each, for each construction site or for each department. So, so coming back to the excitement levels and, and, and all those great stuff with, with AI, um, it's been a fairly um, significant year in, in regards to it. Microsoft launched GPT-4, they've launched 4.0, they've gone into this new area, small language models, which was, you know, not thought really possible a year a year ago, which is basically a smaller version of of an AI model, right? Um, what, do you, what do you see the next five years being like for Dorn? What do you see the future of leverage this technology to help your organization? At the end of the day, Dornan is a, an engineering company. We have over 40 sites around Europe and we have a number of uh, people on those sites. I, I spoke with um, a site manager recently and, and they said they didn't want people using a particular software application because they can do it from their desk. They want them going down onto the site, they want them seeing what's happening at the, at the coal face, mm. uh, what work is being done, what mistakes are being made and so on. There's a danger that you can use technology to replace, the, the, you know, the good work that people will do, and and technology can be used as an excuse to not get work done and to not not do work right. What's different about Copilot is, I think, and AI in general, is it can free people up to do that work. That an awful lot of the day is spent, you know, doing documentation, 
you know, I, I get a complaint every, every time I go to a site that we have too many apps. Okay. And, and when you go through the apps that we have and be they Teams, Outlook, you know, it's very hard to get rid of any of them. But if you can use this Copilot uh, to, to manage a lot of your workload or to, to manage a lot of that finding of documents, that ordering, that, that sorting, that, that creating mm -hmm. of files, you know, it can, it can make a big difference. And I think that's, that's where the excitement lies. Do you think in, in 12 months' time, your, your view of AI will have changed? Because what's happened in the last 12 months and how that has changed? <laughs> There's um, was at an event recently and they, they, they showed a graph that goes with every technology. So you have the skepticism part, you have the wow factor in the middle where it shoots up, and then they have, you have the meh, it's everyday yeah. life. Yeah. I always use the example of Google. Uh, how in God's name I can do my job Wait. without Google? <laughs> Working in IT for the last 20 yeah. years, I've always had Google. I, can, mm. I couldn't imagine having to go to a book to find the answers to things. And then you wouldn't anyway, because it's got so com complex since, mm. you, you know, over that time. Mm. And I think it'll be the same with AI. We get to a stage where it'll just be part of our day to day. Uh, it'll, it'll, the excitement is there. It'll be there for another while yet, but it'll get to part of our day to day and something will happen we'll say it'll go down or something someday and I'll be getting phone calls so people can't work yeah. and you'll be looking back going two years ago you didn't even have this and it stopped you from working you know so it's 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 something that will be part of our everyday lives I'd say in the same mm. way that Google has become in the same way that the graphical user interface was when that came out mm. and as you said the industrial revolution and whatever else has, has happened so there were all major shocks to the system which became normal yeah, yeah exactly <clears throat> what, but um, what I found interesting is as we've gone on this journey I mean when it came to, we we'll say, a certain Azure Open AI as, as a tool, I mean, from an Avanab perspective, we would have very much be focused on upscaling as the product's coming out, so being part owned by Microsoft and Accenture. Um, we're very lucky that we would get access to the product group ahead of time, to Fabric, et cetera. What's, what's been interesting is that when we have that skill set and then work with organizations, it's, it's very much become a partnering element because everybody's on the journey almost it's not like you know previously you would have a civil engineer would come in and you know he's the expert he's gone to college he's done all this but so much of this is new yeah so much of this is everybody helping each other the community of education like from your side uh dornan as a as a technology company from everything i've experienced over my years knowing you and and, and the business it is very advanced for for in comparison to 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 other organizations where do you seek the outside help? So we go to, in, in this case, Microsoft partners. Mm. We go to Microsoft themselves. We, we buy a lot of licensing from them. So mm. we leverage their vast knowledge and their vast capabilities. Um, we go to the likes of yourselves, you know, mm. to, to, to get that information. I go to seminars three or four times a year. If I was to pose a question to you, do you think that Doran Engineering will have 25 AI use cases in the next four years? What would you say? Implement. Is it realistic? Just from where you're sitting today. Because I'd be curious to ask that question in a year's time. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested to answer it in a year's time. Yeah, yeah. It depends what you mean by use cases. So like, uh, yeah, absolutely. I could see 25 use cases. I couldn't see 25 unique Dornan related use cases. As in, as in systems almost. They'll be like, have been solved somewhere else and the, you could leverage it potentially. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just the, the, you know, the day to day use of AI will solve it. Right, Brian, uh, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Avanaz. Imagine what you will do with AI. We were joined today by Brian Furlong from Dornan Engineering. A really insightful interview. Thank you, Brian, for that. And join us on our next episode where we'll gain more insights from our next guests on Imagine What You Will Do With AI.